I've got a fun little box here. Let's see. Boom. So this is going to be my strut mount and O-ring for the right front that is already lowering. <laughs> um, but to be fair, I've had the car in the garage for about, I don't know, 30 minutes now. Um, so today we're going to be tackling the right front shock mount and O-ring. Uh, once again, not many videos on this stuff. So I'm just going to attempt it how I can, just like everything else, and figure it out as it goes. So I already found that I have to undo this uh, absorber, this engine absorber here, because down below, it's going to be hard to see, are the bolts right down there for the shock mount. So I have to pull this absorber off and then I can get to the bolts for the top of the shock. So yeah, let me get the vehicle up. I have it in service mode. If you don't know, you do that by holding the height adjustment lever. This guy right here, height adjustment lever, you push it up, hold it for 10 seconds. Both of these red arrow, both these arrows will turn red and they'll be blinking. And that's when you know it's in the service position. So it disconnects the all four air shocks from the rest of the system so that the compressor does not turn on and try to fill them back up um, as you're jacking it, as you're jacking the vehicle up or lifting it on a lift. So, I'll be right back. See if I can catch this real quick. I don't know if you guys can hear that. But you can hear it leaking right now. I'm actually gonna go get some um, dish soap real quick and see if I can show you guys where it's leaking. Nope, didn't work, so. Uh, I can't show y'all now, but about two weeks ago, I sprayed it with soap and water and it was coming out from the top of the shock. So from my research, don't forget the shock blocks, um, the shock mount and O-ring are what leak. So uh, I sprayed the bag itself and it doesn't seem to be blowing out any air. So uh, it's coming from the top. So I'm pretty sure that's what it is, but back to it. Just gonna share this real quick. Um, I've called Porsche North Austin and they said that they've never heard of filling the system back up with nitrogen. And I was like, okay, well that's weird. You know, through the forums, everyone seems to think that you have to fill it back up with nitrogen. And I understand why it keeps the system free of moisture, but uh, you know, I called an indie shop that does European vehicles, Audi, Mercedes, BMW, and Porsches, and they said the same thing. Never heard of that. We fill all our systems back up with air. Um, you know, shop air is, uh, you know, filtered for the most part. I mean, every shop that I've worked at, every shop that I've been at, you know, the air is pretty filtered. I mean, they don't want to pay for people's air tools, so they're not going to just allow water to build up in the systems corrode out internal parts on air tools um and the same with customer vehicles so uh you know he also the the indie um shop manager also informed me that these uh compressors are able to fill the shock back up so you know that's another thing on the forums guys are saying the compressor is is only built to push air around and that sounded like bullshit to me. I mean, I, I've never... I, I've worked on a lot of air uh, suspension systems, being that I used to work on tractor trailers. Uh, it would be a huge engineering misstep in my eyes 
if you put a compressor on a vehicle that has air suspension and it cannot refill the suspension with air from um, from the you know so I'm just kind of confused at why people think that uh, this thing has been leaking for me for about two weeks now and it fills up perfectly fine as I'm driving the vehicle um, and then overnight it drains out and then the next day or whenever I decide to drive it again it fills back up who knows how long this thing's been leaking before where this vehicle was it was sitting on that lot for over a year which is you know kind of leading me to believe that the o-rings uh, the o-ring and the strut mount are what went just due to age it's been sitting for a long time um it wasn't it wasn't drooping when i picked it up so i'm guessing because i drove it for a while it was uh it was nine hour drive back home from where i bought it so uh, i think that the o-ring finally gave up uh, after you know not being used for a while so Crack them loose with a ratchet. Nut off the other side. 16 millimeter wrench is what I use to take it out. Get the nut off from the back side. Boom, got it loose. Oh, you gotta love aluminum parts, aluminum. That's great. I don't have a, also being in Texas, I mean, I'm from the Northeast, so I'm used to things being rusted shut. Like, <laughs> repairs taking, you know, an hour longer than expected simply because there's just rust everywhere, and you cannot remove bolts. It's very annoying. Living here, look at, oh, beautiful aluminum bolts in Texas. Woo! So nice. So, so nice. All right, so that's the damper. Bushing still seems good on it, like really good. That's good. Okay, just place those out of the way. Now that we can see down there, one, two, and the third one's back there behind that blue wire. Right down there, it's the third. So I think I'll take those loose. I'll get those loose now. I love it, 16 millimeter nuts on the struts. Love it when uh, manufacturers keep things consistent that are near each other. Just makes sense. Okay, all three of these nuts are loose. Again, they're aluminum, so that's awesome. There is a small bracket here that is connected that I need to remove. Here's that bracket that I'm talking about. It's right here, that little bolt right there. That's what I have to take off, I think. Maybe not. 
Oh, you know what? That's connected to that whole bracket. So when I pull all of the nuts off, this whole piece comes off. So I think I'm just gonna unplug this sensor and then we'll be good there. So I got the plug off sensor for the shock. I'm guessing for the PASM. Uh, and yeah, so it looks like this bracket stays on. I don't really see a need for it to come off. Uh, I think I'm gonna have to take this. There's a boot down there. When I'm ready to pull the shock out, I'm pretty sure I have to pull that boot. And then that sensor should be able to go through the hole and I can pull it all out as one. As you can see, this guy has no air in it now, so it should be okay. All right, ABS sensor removed, or the plug anyway. Stick that guy out of the way. Next, air fitting, upper control arm. Um, lower control arm, which is the actual strut. And then I think sway bar. This piece of plastic here blocking. I'm gonna probably take this off. Nope, I'm taking it off from, from the top. Okay. All right, airline removed. Boom. Oh. Just a little back up. Okay, now I'm gonna move to upper control alarm, lower control alarm, and sway bar. Okay, I had to remove this shield, which was blocking the other side of the lower control alarm bolt. So I pulled that off, so now I should be able to get the lower control arm bolt out. I got the sway bar bolt loose, so yeah. All right, so I had to remove the sway bar link, pretty easy. 18 millimeter bolts, one there, and the other one goes up top in the strut, obviously. 18 millimeter bolt for the upper ball joint there. Um, there was a T15 in the back of, sitting right back here. Um, yeah, so I think the strut is ready to come out. Okay, so since I'm telling you, there's not really any turbo uh, 958s out there, like DIY videos, so I'm just trying to share this with everyone that might be trying to take on these type of repairs themselves. Um, so... You gotta take this bracket off, which is on the spindle, right? On the back of the spindle, uh, it's a brake line. So you have to take that off so you can move the spindle back and forth, like so. You push the spindle towards, you know, to the left, uh, towards the vehicle, and then that way you can just take the strut and lean it towards you, and you can pull it out. And here it is. So now, oh yeah, like I said, that sensor on top came out with it, pulled right through the hole, so that's good. I did not have to remove that boot. I don't know, um, my brain was kind of fried. I'm still really fried, um, so I don't know why I thought I would have to take that off. But <clears throat> now comes the fun part, I suppose, which is pulling these Torx heads it bolts off so that I can pull this bad boy apart and replace what needs to be replaced. Okay, so here's the shock mount. 
taken off. Now, what I had to do was I had to cut the wire. Is it raining? Uh, I think it's raining now. Oh well. Um, I had to cut the wire that goes through the shock for the adjustment. That's fine. It's only a two wire plug, so I'm not worried about that. Here's the O ring, and if you can see, it's looking pretty flat. So I'm pretty sure that is where the leak's coming from. Because as you can see, here's the new one, and that bad boy's round. So I'll compare them when I take that one off. Oh, and what I used was uh, my impact with a 13 sixteenths, supposed to be 21 millimeter, but I used a 13 sixteenths, 12 point deep thin wall socket to get that shock mount off. Um, the impact, all I had to do was just hit it a few times and it got nice and loose. Uh, so yeah. Okay, so I'm going to try to show the issue. This dirty one on the right is the old one. I'm trying to show you how it's kind of concaved in the middle from all the pressure being sat on it versus the new one. It was perfectly round still. So you can see there's a dishing on this one. And I, I'm pretty sure that's why it was leaking. Um, and the leak wasn't, you know, super severe so that uh, the compressor could keep up with filling the bag and trying to keep air in it as I drove it. So hopefully that's coming out. Uh, yeah. So I'm going to change it, put this one in, and should be all set. thought this would be interesting to show. So this is the old shock mount. Look at how there's no room in here for the nut, which is why it's so hard for people to figure out how to get something in there to get this nut off on the Cayennes um, with the adjustable air suspension. Uh, there's a wire coming through, which that's not hard to deal with, but getting a socket inside of there or a wrench. I, I saw a guy use a wrench, and I'm like, how the fuck, you know, Anyway, um, here's the new one, and look at all that room. So, you know, I think Porsche up, upgraded the design, um, maybe to help <laughs> their mechanics have an easier time getting this nut off, but yeah. Anyway, I just thought that would be interesting to show. They gave a little bit more room, and it's, uh, there's some kind of indentions here now, which are way more pronounced than the old one. This is the old one. Here's the new one. Interesting. Okay, new O-ring is installed. Okay, shock mounts installed. O-rings installed in there. Time to put this bad boy back together. Got to splice the, the hat back on. So I'll be right back after I do that. All right, so as you can see, we are back. Air pressure seems to be holding. It's been about, I don't know, hour and 15 minutes. And it's still good. So I'll say that that is a uh, success. It's been a couple days because I had to order a new upper control arm because sometimes when you're working really late and you're tired, your brain doesn't work. And I snapped the ball joint off. Or the, you know, the stud. I snapped the stud for the ball joint. Clean off. Uh, so I had to, I had to wait for a new one to come in the mail. And it did. Got it all back together. 
Um, no more chassis failure light. The uh, PASM buttons work. Um, so all my chassis control works. Uh, the height control works. I can go all the way up to off-road and all the way down to low-level loading. Um, and everywhere in between. So we're good to go. So thanks for tuning in. Um, yeah, that's all I got.